Well, I was sincerely dead. Yeah, I get that a lot. I'm quite happy to be there. You gonna kill me or what? She can't believe that she's back. Believe it or not, Ripley is back. Really? 37-19. Action. And there's plenty of action coming up in the next half hour as we go behind the scenes with Sigourney Weaver and Winona Ryder in the sci-fi thriller Alien Resurrection. Can you believe we're here? Join us as we'll give you an alien view from the state-of-the-art spacecraft to the latest computer-generated effects. The tale moves with more realism. And Ripley didn't come back alone. You mean my baby? <laughs> Ripley Ellen, Lieutenant First Class. Well, I was sincerely dead, and quite happy to be dead. But I think I unwittingly gave them this perfect science fiction situation. A situation where Ellen Ripley is found in deep space, part of a top secret experiment conducted by a scientist known as Gitterman, played by Brad Dourif. She is part of an experiment to see if aliens can be used for military purposes because the only DNA of the aliens exists in her blood. Something has gone wrong in the cloning and so that she's had a sort of genetic mix with the alien. You're going to make us all very proud. There is a something about Ripley's nature in, in this particular film that makes everything a different perspective. Um, how she relates to humans, how she relates to aliens, how she relates to being in space. But how much of a welcome will Ripley give to the crew of the spaceship The Betty? Annalee Call heads this merry band of mercenaries played by Winona Ryder. What I really liked about the character of Call was that she wasn't ultra-violent. Um, she actually doesn't really kill anybody. She she is just really a cerebral character. No one was on board, sir. My own recipe. Way more dangerous. But Call relies on Jonner, the muscle behind her crew of space smugglers, played by Ron Perlman. The crew of the Betty is a group of sort of guns for hire. There's Jonner, Christy, Elgin, Hillard, Call, Brees. We will do anything for money. These were very, very hard to come by. So was our cargo. Whatever you got going on here ain't exactly approved by Congress. It's a military operation. The vision behind Alien Resurrection comes from director Jean-Pierre Genet. It's impossible to say no to Alien to this, about this opportunity, you know. And uh, I went to Hollywood to meet the guys. It was impossible to imagine for me to do a huge film like this. The reason the series seems to work is that they always pick a very good, brilliant, young director who takes the alien elements and makes them his own. He's made it unlike any of the other movies, but yet he has, you know, it's, it's still, it's going to be terrifying. All hell breaks loose. He is conducting illegal experiments. He's breeding some I sort of... God, listen to me! Home. He is breeding an alien species. Still to come on our behind-the-scenes look at Alien Resurrection, meet the new and improved alien creatures, deadlier than ever. The aliens have a great deal of intelligence and kind of malicious humor. And Winona Ryder reflects on a childhood memory. Ripley was one of my heroes growing up. Al ritmo de Hollywood. Este lunes, solo en E Entertainment Television. La televisión del espectáculo.
Conozca las noticias, los comentarios y news. El reporte de último momento con Steve Kemetko. Todos los días, solo en E-Entertainment Television. En un universo lleno de rumores, comentarios y noticias. En una galaxia repleta de excitantes producciones. Solo un canal le puede ofrecer lo que usted quería saber de sus artistas favoritos. E-Entertainment Television. 24 horas con toda, absolutamente toda la información de lo que sucede en el mundo del cine, la televisión, la música, la moda y el espectáculo. Y e Entertainment Television, la máxima autoridad en información y noticias sobre el mundo del entretenimiento. Welcome back to our behind-the-scenes look at Alien Resurrection. The fourth installment is a sequel that seemed impossible, especially since Ripley killed herself at the end of Alien 3. But 20th Century Fox decided not to let her death spoil a good thing. They found a way to bring Ripley back. Well, first of all, I had such a great way of bringing Ripley back, such a sort of timely, sort of hot issue. How did you... How did we get you? Hard work. We've remade you. We cloned you. The script was gave me, um, as an actor, a chance to sort of play. Does it I would say this sort of anti Ripley. No more sort of trying to save the world and being good, but sort of being bad. And that was um, interesting. It was that same interest which led Sigourney in the original Alien back in 1979. Well, I think originally it was written for a guy and. Um, Then the producers thought, oh, wouldn't it be interesting if the last person the audience expects to save the day is, is this young woman? I was about eight or nine when I saw it, because it came out in 79, the first one, and, and I had never seen a woman survive at the end of a science fiction movie or action movie. Ripley was one of my heroes growing up. Well, she knows what's going to happen. She knows what we're up against. So here you like ran into these things before. Yeah. What did you do? I died. So I never even thought I'd get a chance to meet her, let alone act with her, let alone be in an alien movie with her. Now they brought it out of you. Not all the way out. It's actually very moving, the relationship between the two of them. It's not like a buddy movie at all. Winona is such an amazing actress. She's so intuitive and so strong. With Winona, that's different because everything is easy for her. Apparently, I don't, know, I don't know, but I think everything is easy. What I really liked about the character of Call was that she's not just a shoot 'em up character at all. She's very humane. I don't get it. If they took it out, why are they keeping you alive? I'm the latest thing. She lived up to every expectation that I had. She is so, mm. she has so much integrity and, and she's so funny and so uh, kind and intelligent and just brings, she's so protective of her character and of, of the series. Come on, I'll give you a ball. You have to know she's a big lady. And <clears throat> when you work with Sigourney, You have to know she knows exactly what she wants. Winona and Sigourney made a perfect combination of brains and brawn, even when submerged underwater, without scuba gear. I don't like it. What's to like? I survived. Winona survived. I, I don't think people usually think of me for stuff, uh, science fiction or, or anything where I would have to handle a weapon or be tough or anything. I feel like I'm usually the, the scrawny one. I actually was really surprised with um, my, myself. I was, you know, I was kind of proud. The big thing on the set, you know, can you believe we're working with Sigourney Weaver? <laughs> we're an alien. It's like a, a dream come true. Still ahead. An extraterrestrial reunion you'll never forget. I don't think creature effects have ever been able to come up with anything like this. 
And Ripley's baby is all grown up. All right, stand by for rehearsal, guys. Stand by, please. Siempre encienda la fantasía. Una programación llena de magia, color y desbordantes emociones para celebrar en grande la época más vibrante y feliz del año. Sí, la Navidad está en I. Con los trascámaras de películas y series que se han convertido en los clásicos de la maravilla y la ficción. Encienda la fantasía, porque diciembre es un mes para recordar. Solo en E Entertainment Television. Latinoamérica, yo soy Paola y Ella. Francisco. De Onda Man. We're moving. What? The ship is moving. I can feel it. The ship has stealth run. There's no way you can tell. She's right. The ship's been go since the attack. Welcome back. To behind the scenes, E's 30-minute look at Alien Resurrection, the fourth installment of the Alien series. The alien creature is just one part of the film's incredible special effects. There's also spectacular model work, created by Ian Hunter and Matthew Gratzner. Hunter Gratzner Industries provided all of the miniatures used in Alien Resurrection. The action takes place on two principal locations, the Riga, which is a very large spaceship uh, used by the military, and the Betty, which is a much smaller spaceship used by a band of uh, mercenaries or pirates. We had a total of crew of about 35, ranging from sculptors to model makers, welders, mechanical engineers, painters, uh, a wide variety of uh, artistic talents brought together for the show. And with this film, the talented twosome had a unique approach when it came to miniatures. One of the things in most effects films is you cut back to a spaceship flying, you know it's a spaceship, you know it's a, it's a, a miniature shot, whereas we tried to have it Miniatures in this film, particularly in many scenes, formed the sets. In other words, the miniatures were used as the backdrops and the actors were just dropped into the scenes. And particularly the interior docking bay, the observation room, those were both rather large miniatures that were just used as entire backgrounds as opposed to just an element flying through a, a, a scene. The term miniature is kind of funny because uh, on this show, uh, the Betty was probably the smallest model we built, which is five and a half feet. But the Riga spaceship was 12 feet long and the observation room model was 30 feet long and uh, the size of miniatures seems to actually be, be increasing because there's much more of a desire for the reality to uh, be there. Realism was also the motive in the development of a new and improved alien creature. Eric Henry contributed his special effects wizardry to this monster makeover. I was one of two visual effects supervisors on Alien Resurrection. The biggest challenge was the fact that uh, this time we had to... Uh, Jean-Pierre really wanted to have uh, a look, the alien uh, look incredibly real. This time we were going to show the lower body in a few shots. Uh, and most uh, critically in a swimming sequence. We decided to go CG and a 3D alien was uh, created by Blue Sky in New York. It was here in the quiet suburb of Harrison, New York, just north of Manhattan, where the beast was born at Blue Sky BIFX. Jan Carlin, Christopher Scholard, and Mitch Kobelman are responsible for creating the first ever fully computer-generated alien. Part of our specialties, besides the character animation, is integrating uh, computer-generated elements in with live action plays. But this is the first time that anyone's done the entire alien as a computer model. I mean, the alien swim. The alien swimming sequence became a collaborative effort between Eric Henry and the team at Blue Sky Studios. Yeah, the people at Blue Sky, Jan Carle, uh, the animation supervisor, came to us. Uh, we did some research on how to make it uh, swim, and he came to us with several, you know, versions of uh, National Geographic uh, specials that had this or that. And the one that we chose was a sea iguana, oddly enough. We used the sea iguana for uh, some swimming footage. We used uh, uh, alligators, uh, snakes, uh, a, a frog climbing, lizards climbing up, up walls, uh, 
Each of these had, had elements that I thought was interesting and that could be applied to this composite creature we were going to put together. Once the movements of the alien creature are determined, digital effects supervisor Mitch Kopelman does his magic. Take that motion that they've given the alien and then bring it to life through lighting and effects around the alien. Just trying to make the alien look underwater was a, was a really difficult feat. We created uh, computer-generated bubbles um, which interact with the alien so that as the alien swims along, you'll actually see the bubbles moving. Um, and we created a special sort of underwater effect that helps the alien look as if it's in a murky water atmosphere. So putting all these pieces together really helps it feel that the alien's really swimming underwater. And here you can see this, it's a, we've applied the uh, skin and the lighting to the, uh, to the creature. The mats have been um, completed on the feet. This is the final composite as you see in the movie. Coming up on behind the scenes of Alien Resurrection, the alien itself makes an appearance. In a few hours, it's going to burst its way through your rib cage, and you're going to die. Any questions? It won't break! Give me your weapon! Father, lock the door! No! Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of Alien Resurrection. After 200 years, Ellen Ripley is back, but she did not come alone. Ellen Ripley died trying to wipe the species out. I'm not anxious to see her taking up her old hobbies. Well, Ripley may be up to her old alien antics, but for creature effects designers Tom Woodruff Jr. and Alec Gillis, working on Alien Resurrection was a homecoming of sorts. We uh, started on the Alien series uh, on the second film, Aliens. We worked uh, under Stan Winston as two of his right-hand men. And then on Alien 3, as our own company, uh, we did the effects for that, and now we've followed it up with uh, Alien 4, Alien Resurrection. One of our goals was uh, to uh, sort of recreate the alien a little bit, reinvent it, but not go so far as to um, make it a, a wholly different creature. And this time around we wanted to go back and do something a little more different, a little more true to the original uh, uh, genesis of the alien, which is that, it's, uh, that it gestates within a human host, so it, it, it has a lot of the characteristics of its host organism, which is, you know, human being. Although this dynamic duo has a history with the alien series, Woodruff knows what it's like to walk in the alien's footsteps, literally. Well, I think when I started wearing suits about 10 years ago, it happened uh, out of me wanting to do it. When it was, whenever I was a, uh, uh, even as a kid watching movies, watching monster movies on TV, I always thought it would be great to be the guy inside the suit. And when I'm in the suit, I can do a lot of body work, a lot of body moves. Um, the most difficult thing is, is getting from one point to another because I'm operating almost blind in the suit. And Alec and I have a lot of discussions and a lot of planning as to what we want the alien to be in, in terms of how he appears on screen. So if I can be in the suit performing and Alec is outside standing to the director's side, Alec is in a sense directing my performance based on where we want to go and of course inter integrating it with what the director wants to see. But to see what Tom and Alec can really do in the world of creature effects, we took a tour of the ADI facilities in Chatsworth, California. Our company, ADI, uh, otherwise known as Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, is uh, a, a mouthful for special makeup and animatronic creature effects. This slime is really the uh, uh, one of the key alien signatures, you know, um, because it, it covers his body, it runs out of his mouth. We have uh, various concoctions, various viscosities of slime, depending on what they're going to be used for. The slimy goo came in handy when this creative team set out to design the Alien Queen's Lair. 
The whole point of the Viper Pit was it was the alien lair. It was very uh, symbolic of a, of a you know a, a den of snakes, and it was all cast up out of flexible materials, and it was all covered in slime. We had uh, just just gallons and gallons of, of our, our slime-based material. Sigourney is is an incredibly brave actor. She, there's there's nothing if she believes in it. There's nothing she won't do. She likes to do some weird things. You know, she's ready to try everything. If I'm on the surface. If I'm on the surface, would I have slimy hair? There are things in this movie that no one has ever seen before because I don't think creature effects have ever been able to come up with anything like this. And in this sequel, there have been some frightening improvements. For the eggs, one of the things Jean-Pierre said to us was that uh, he felt that the eggs in the first film looked a little bit lifeless. They looked a little mechanical. Uh, and so we took that as a challenge to make our eggs more lifelike than they had ever been seen before. These effects geniuses did such a good job that some of their creatures took on a life of their own. It's so incredible that you end up, at the end of the day, you're talking to it or you're, you, know, you bump into it, oh, excuse me, you know, it becomes part of the cast. And then there is the newborn. A horrific creation and a terrifying addition to the alien legacy. The newborn came about like like a lot of our projects. It's sort of a, 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 a synthesis of where we want to go as designers and creature creators, um, and as always, uh, uh, the involvement of the the director. Another important uh, aspect to this creature is that the decision was made early on to do it completely as a robotic. We have a lot of shoot 'em up stuff and the special effects and the, the action and everything is, is probably the best of any picture that we've done. I see it, someone's out to make a sequel. You know, cash in on all the movie murder hoopla. So it's our job to observe the rules of the sequel. Be sure to catch Behind the Scenes next week as we take you to the set of Scream 2. The body count is always bigger. Number two, the death scenes are always much more elaborate. Carnage, candy. How did we find the killer, Randy? That's what I want to know. Well, let's look at the suspects. There's the obvious boyfriend, Derek. So you think it's Derek? Not so fast. Forget the boyfriend. Usted está disfrutando de E-Entertainment Television. Quédese con nosotros y vea a continuación de E-Files. Lo mejor de nuestros fascinantes archivos, las entrevistas, los reportajes y los programas que usted siempre quiso volver a ver. Solo en E-Entertainment Television. Enchanted world, a sorcerer's curse, a sputum, a young princess who vanished, Anastasia! without a trace, curse is on you. Yeah, ain't that the kick in the head? I guess a curse just ain't what it used to be, huh, sir? One of the greatest mysteries of all time is now one of the most magical motion picture events of our time. The rumor. The legend, the mystery. Anya's an orphan in search of her past. I just want to know who I am, whether or not I belong to a family. You think that I am Anastasia? Anastasia? Anastasia. Ah, uh, sir, your lips. And they're teaming up to find her family. Hold on! No matter what it takes. Hey, your prayers, Anastasia! Dimitri! <laughs> There's got to be something in there better than this. That'll work. Go, go! Maybe, maybe. You're gonna have to jump. After you! Maybe. Dimitri! Anya! One step at a time, 
one hope than another. It's the real thing, Blair. You've got to tell her. Tell me what? This holiday season, share the fun. Whoa, that fell right out there, sir. The music. I can love it with you. I you can do it. Whoa! And unlock the secret to the greatest mystery the world has ever known. And it's true. Anastasia. Lo mejor del cine mundial está en Movie Flash, solo en E! Entertainment Television. archivos guardamos momentos impactantes, escenas exitosas. Talking to the character, you're talking, I'm talking, I'm me talking to John, and everything else is taking care of itself. Stick around, you must go behind the scenes if you want to know what you need to be a class A star. Chemistry, um, sex, and tremendous performances. Huh? Eh? Don't go on, just 